Hey guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this video on the tropics. And so, guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about conditions that are currently persistent across the North Atlantic basin. Uh, are we going to be having a busy August? And we're going to be making mention of two systems over in the EPAC very briefly in this video, but the main focus will be on the Atlantic. And so, guys, before I go into details, Okay guys, and so first off, let us take a look at the current satellite view of the Atlantic. And so we're seeing here that we don't have a whole lot going on right now, but we do have quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity taking place off the coast of Africa. So we do have a wave right there. And so it is going to be encountering some unfavorable conditions that are not going to be encouraging a developing environment for the system here. So we're going to be talking about conditions very shortly. But in terms of the rest of the... Um, North Atlantic Basin, the Caribbean is relatively quiet, same as the Gulf of Mexico. And so now let us take a look at the wind shear map. And so the different colors here mean different shear intensity. So we have the greens meaning that the environment is favorable, that is wind shear that won't affect our systems. The neutral mean that they won't really affect them too much, but when you see the reds, that means the environment is quite unfavorable. So that is when we're going to be having our systems developing and that wind shear we just cut off. Uh, those thunderstorms and rip up our systems guys and so we're seeing here that we don't have the full extent of the uh, main development region but for the western section as well as the caribbean we're seeing that we do have some spots of favorable shear uh the gulf of mexico as well mainly favorable and in the vicinity of the bahamas and this is something that changes constantly so this being favor and favorable environment now doesn't mean that it will be in the next few days so it's something that is changing constantly and so now let us take a look at the saharan dust map and so we're seeing here that when you see those yellows it means that there isn't a whole lot of dust and if our systems probably move into that region they probably won't be impacted too badly but they might have a bit of a struggle but as you head to the oranges the reds and that pink shade a lot of dust especially with that red and that pink shade very very dense amounts of dust persisting in the atmosphere and so that wave of Africa is going to be encountering some of that Saharan dust and the Saharan dust encourages a dry and environment and it will not enable a lot of moisture so our systems will most definitely not develop if they are embedded in a region of very dense amounts of saharan dust because of course they need warmth and moisture and none of that will be present to help them to grow and intensify and so guys we're seeing here that as we move into the caribbean we're not seeing much saharan dust just a few spots and the gulf is relatively clear of it just a little patch right there but nothing too impactful and so in terms of the ocean temperatures now we're seeing here that the gulf is very favorable in terms of ocean temperatures and as well as the uh, caribbean especially the northwestern section of the caribbean and in the vicinity of the bahamas and the eastern section of the main development region is relatively cool so usually in the month of august we would have our tropical waves moving off africa making their way westward and they can enter the caribbean or grow up the east coast and in those regions conditions can be very 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 favorable we've seen in the past where we've had some systems rapidly intensify in those regions for example back in 2017 harvey harvey made his way across the south caribbean and into the gulf of mexico and became a catastrophic category for a monster and we've seen last year laura made its way into the caribbean moved across the greater antilles into the gulf and became almost a category 5 monster making landfall in louisiana so we cannot underestimate these areas especially the gulf that's usually a hot spot for systems to intensify in the hurricane season and so guys now let us take a look at where our systems might go for the month so the typical tracks and origins of our tropical cyclones and so we're seeing here that that first arrow takes the systems away from africa so tropical waves that merge off africa and make their way westward we're seeing here that this first arrow is showing them moving across the caribbean 
and into the Gulf of Mexico where we could have development. And so the next one is showing that systems can make their way north of the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico or they can probably just make their way up north to the east coast and then curve out to sea and not move inland. And we see that a lot but generally in August we have a lot of waves that make their way into the Caribbean region into the Gulf. And so we definitely have to watch the Gulf of Mexico. There have been way too many systems that rapidly intensify and I'm not just talking about tropical storms or category ones here. I'm talking about major hurricanes category four systems that intensify in the Gulf of Mexico. And usually when we would see a lot of activities as we're going to be headed into the peak, so mainly about late August going into September is where we should start to see somewhat of a surge in activity, but it will all depend on the wind shear and the Saharan dust. Those are the two main factors right now that are really going to be influencing our tropical waves as they make their way off Africa. And so if we do have tropical waves that make their way off Africa and develop into tropical cyclones, they're considered Cabo Verde tropical cyclones because they basically come from that island chain, that small archipelago, which is known as Cape Verde or Cabo Verde. And so guys, now let us take a look at something quite interesting that the GFS model is showing. And so this is a map showing the isobars, which are lines of equal pressure. And the closer you see them in a circular manner with the pressure below 1030 millibars, that is a low pressure system and can be our tropical cyclone. So that is what we're looking for here. So this is by Thursday, the 5th of August. And just to the southwest of Cabo Verde, we're seeing here that we have a 1030 millibar system. And so as we head further out to Saturday, the 7th of the month we're seeing here that the pressure has dropped and when you have a decrease in pressure there is an increase in intensity so 1008 millibar system so this is probably a tropical depression potentially a tropical storm at that point but as we head further out we see that nothing much becomes of the system so i would say most likely it is going to be moving into a region that has maybe some unfavorable shear and some dense amounts of dry air from that saharan dust and so as as we move to the 12 we see that the system is north of Puerto Rico but GFS is not showing much development of the system so it is showing that maybe as of right now the best chance for it to develop would be out in the main development region which is itself not the most favorable environment right now for us to have development but guys as I said as we're going to be headed into the latter part of August going into September we could see a spike in tropical activity and uh, if you live in areas that are usually affected, such as the Caribbean, uh, the Bahamas, the East Coast, the Gulf Coast, please start taking the necessary precautions. There are certain things that you can do from now to prepare. So even though your area is not guaranteed to be affected by a tropical cyclone, because none of us know where we'll be feeling the worst of tropical cyclones this season. We do not know. We can't know. And as a result, once we're in that zone where we could be affected we have to ensure that we take all the necessary precautions and not just wait until disaster is at our doorsteps to do so guys so i'm encouraging you all to please prepare for the season if you have not begun already and so guys in terms of the systems over in the epac they're both highlighted in orange which means that, the, that there's a medium chance for both of these to develop so we have that first one given a 50 percent chance to develop into a tropical cyclone and that second one behind is given a 40 percent chance to develop and we're not seeing the x for this one because that low pressure area has not yet developed but when it does so in the vicinity of that treated orange region that is where we could see some development but the good news is that these systems will be well offshore and so guys that is it for this update video and so if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be wise and of course i'll keep you updated as time goes by